actually signed Casey and Paula. And uh, the long national nightmare is over. Finally, they got it done. Now, I'd say, listen, we're happy for Casey. And by the way, by all accounts, seems like a really cool guy. Yeah. Very fat. Uh, his fashion is really what gets me. Like, when they, they do take pictures together and stuff, he's had some pretty cool pretty cool uh, different things that he has worn that, that have caught my eye. Things that I could never pull off, but I can still admire. Now, what kind of a player is he going to be? What is he known for? He obviously has a familiarity with Mike Brown from the uh, the, the Nigerian national team. Uh, the defense is where it's at. But here's the question. And just, by the way, it's Chikezi Jake Okpala. We're, oh, I was going to say, where does the KZ come from? Because it's CJ, but it's I, because it's Chikezi. So KZ, okay. right? Duh, I should have known that. Nigerian-American professional basketball player was born in Anaheim. Hmm. Went to Stanford, went to Esperanza High in Orange County. Yeah. So played for, he missed his uh, 11 games his freshman year at Stanford uh, because of academic ineligibility. Now, before you go running with that, it's at Stanford. It happens. Like, it's not like we're talking about an Alabama or Florida State. Right. Like, if you, miss, if you miss time, if you're ineligible, uh, I did say Alabama. If you're missing time due to ineligibility to Alabama or Florida State, that's a problem. If it's at Stanford, Notre Dame. Yeah, different requirements. Different requirements. Yeah. You know, Florida State, Alabama, Clemson, UCLA. Uh, what? Oh, I just got parked down. Yeah, I got to be careful now. He was drafted by the Suns with the 32nd overall pick in the 2019 draft. He was soon traded to the Heat. Uh, they signed him. He played a couple of their games, but missed 19 games due to Achilles. I like that he was with that organization. I love the uh, same thing. Uh, they, maybe you get a little bit of that heat culture. That yes. Pat Riley just rubbed off on him. Uh, he was traded to the Thunder uh, last February for draft considerations. They they waived him two days later. Now here's where okay, so he did play in the Heat organization. He was traded to OKC. Draft considerations, which is what they've got yeah. and then waived, which I'm sure there was some sort of cappy salary reasony thing for them to do it. So it's not like any other team waving a player. Like this is the same team that sent Al Horford home two years ago and Horford helped almost helped the Celtics win a title last right. year. Um, he's known for his defense more than anything else. Um, you know, he shot 38% from the field. Uh, or excuse me, from behind the arc with with, with Stanford, right, and then thirty five percent almost with Miami in a very small sample size. Yeah, I keep getting to the same spot with with what we're would call the back end of the roster. Um, I think fans are intrigued always by players that don't play. There's a reason they don't play, and sometimes some players you got to admit maybe just got a raw deal, but they're are a lot of players on this roster that feel like they can play, but you got to play what eight, nine, ten. So when we did that exercise early in three yeah. for madness, okay, is it Terrence Davis that doesn't get to play? Is it Trey Lyles that doesn't get to play? Alex Len can play. I don't know how much he's going to play. Uh, Baysmore, yeah, uh, Delavadova, Quinn Cook, Akpala here. I mean, we're these are guys that are all important to the team. Yes, but some people because the amount of minutes are more important. So Dave, you called this the Kyle guy Memorial team. And I, I think did. it's fascinating because there are so many members of said team. Can you guys honestly think of all your years watching the Kings? I mean, let's go back to 1980 freaking five. Wow. Of a player that just could not get off the bench in Sacramento. Gerald Wallace. That's one. That's like the, <laughs> that's one. You know that that's the, that's, that's the one, one everybody goes to. So now I'm going right. to put a caveat. <laughs> but could get off, not get off the bench and what, what, what do you mean? He like that they just deserve to got, be? Never got, uh, so I'm going to give the full context yeah. here. And I want you to take out when the team was good because that's when instances like this happen is when there's right. too much talent. Yes. So I want you to go between 85 and 99, or excuse me, 85 and 98 and Ugh. 06 to now. Ugh. Can you think of a guy that just could not get off the bench in Sacramento, just didn't play? And went on to be like just really freaking good, like a a game changing type of guy. No. That's like, oh my god, how did they not play him? I feel like the best we can do is like when we occasionally see like Ben McLemore playing for a team in the playoffs. That's that's 
getting playing time. Yeah, but that's that doesn't count. <laughs> no, and he even played here like, right. a lot. Right, he played a I'm lot. I'm saying here. a guy who just yeah. again the Kyle guy who it's like, man, if they would just play player X who hasn't played in 35 straight games, yes. everything would be better. Because that's where uh, there was a line in the American President with Michael J. Fox and uh, and uh, uh, what's his face, uh, uh, Michael Douglas, and they were having a conversation about voters and whether they're smart or stupid. And one of them had a line. It was something like when, when you're, when you're start, when you're dying of thirst in the desert, you'll convince yourself that the sand is water. There was something to that effect. And it always stuck with me. And I thought of Kings fans because we are so starved and thirsty that Kyle guy becomes a game. By the way, I'm old enough to remember when Jimmer Fredette was going to be the difference maker for yeah. this team after he was drafted. Do you guys remember a couple seasons ago in controversy, Daquan Jeffries has been waved. Waved. Right. How can you do that? Um, who was, well, hold on. Who was the one that, uh, not Corey Joseph, but I thought it was, was it somebody else that was a defensive guard that we let go? Maybe it was Corey Joseph. I, it was Corey Joseph. We traded Corey Joseph. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, oh my God, we could have used him in the backcourt. Like, Kojo no, I feel like Kojo was the guy everyone like. He was the uh, he was, he was the guy who one blamed. Yes, and and last year, well, who was the scapegoat we were just talking about a couple years ago or last year? Uh, it Buddy Heel. Buddy Heel. Thank you. Now Buddy's gone. It, 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 is there any doubt, by the way, that the Buddy Heel Memorial Scapegoat Award is like one hundred percent going to be the Aaron Fox this year? Right. Yes. It's always to me, it's it's the best longest tenured player. Can I say this? I feel like De'Aaron the last. He's almost the scapegoat emeritus. Yeah, <laughs> like there's always a player, but eventually it always goes back to De'Aaron. Yeah, I would say this, though. I would say there's really nobody else that can even try unless DeMontis Sabonis averages like four points a game. But yeah, uh, the only other thing I might say is that this this could be a very interesting year for Harrison Barnes, too. Mm -hmm. Like if Harrison Barnes just goes out and just, you know, Harrison Barnes, Harrison Barnes is it. Great guy. Yeah. 22 points and eight rebounds today. And then the next three games, he averages seven and three, right. you know, it's just up and down. Now you see him. Now you don't, I feel like he's going to get a couple of, I'll strikes. give you a wild card because of the trade, Kevin Herter. Well, I agree. <laughs> and, and here's the thing as we go to break, let me, let me bring it all back together here. Let's, let's take whether it's Herter or Barnes, Harrison Barnes. Let's say he averages seven points and three rebounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, people will lose their minds. Hold on, there's more. But if they're winning, it's Harrison Barnes is a team player. <laughs> he puts his ego away, and and you will hear this. Yeah. And if they didn't have guys like Harrison Barnes, they're not winning these games. He's boy, a game manager. Boy, isn't it hilarious how winning and losing changes the context exactly. of the conversation around that, players? Does it really? Yeah. Ah. I I just figured that out this segment. Give me an A. Well, it's a big loss for. Uh, 